As we move further along the line, we can see a few things missing, like the signals, the signal box, and probably other details for this little tiny area. But we're not going to start those this week. So what we're going to look at is a little tiny building in this cunning plan drawing of Jarrah Road. Yeah, it's been a while since we've looked at this drawing. So what we're going to do, we're going to make this little cottage here. And the building I'm going to use, or adapt, to put in that space is this little cottage. Now you may have seen this in the series Vera. Um, I'm going to adapt this little building to fit in that space. The part of the building I want to copy is this piece all the way up to the second chimney so it's only that small portion and the part of the building that sticks out uh, at the rear of the building. I do have another picture so we'll have a look at that and uh, here it is so it's basically from there to there. So if you've ever seen the detective series Vera, um, that's my little inspiration for this area here. So this is the template that I've made and um, if I make it to that size and shape it will fit in there nicely. Um, that is the actual base I'm going to use. It's, it's two mil thick. There's a good reason why I've made the base that thick, because in here I'm going to have a stone yard. Uh, it'll be a very very small stone yard as it happens. But I think once once it's made, uh, yeah, I think it'll look good. The reason why I've picked a small building rather than a uh, huge cottage, I think that will fit in quite well. Um, and if I use a similar kind of stone that I've got there, like there is in the photograph, uh, that sandstone look, yeah, I think, yep. Yeah. So that's the plan. So the next thing I'm, I want to do is uh, draw up some drawings so I can work out where the windows and doors go and uh... right so here we are we're back at the bench yet again and um, I've been mulling over this photograph just picking out a few details that I want to keep the side door the um, annex window uh, a couple of chimneys the door there which you can't see on this photograph but you can't see on the other photograph which I just quickly show you that there there is a door just in there you can just about make out so I've been like I said I've, I've been mulling over this photograph and um, I've come up with a drawing now and this is it as you can see I've just captured a few of the details just lift that up and get it into focus there we go so we have the annex window, we have the door over here somewhere, there. <laughs> uh, I'm putting in three windows along this area here. And there's the door there, and a small window, two chimneys. And uh, yeah, and in the top left hand corner I've got the dimensions for the chimneys. Now most of these dimensions are based on some windows and doors that I've got already which I'm going to modify to suit this building and it is quite a small building um, looking at this footprint as you can see it's a small building but there's a lot of detail just in doing the walls um, on their own so I'm going to fo focus on doing these four walls to start with and then see what happens next I might have to redraw for the long wall that goes along here and um, the small apex wall here and the large opening here so I'm going to carry on working out bits and pieces and at the same time I'm going to start cutting out some of these walls
So this is the card I'm going to use for covering the walls. This is M0059. Um, it hasn't long been out by um, Medcalf. And um, what I do like is the texture of the stone, as you can see. Um, this is what I normally use, the M0058. And um, yeah, there's, there's a, quite a big difference. And there has to be some sort of contrast between the uh, the the farm, as it were, um, to the surrounding walls, and, and I think that will will do the job nicely. So moving on to the walls, as you can see, I've got quite a few done already. Um, this is the long wall, which I haven't drawn up. Um, I don't particularly need to draw it up because all the dimensions are there on the base. So that's one side, and if I put the front wall on there, you get a rough idea of how it's going to look. I just leave that there, like so. Now, obviously, they've got the, the end wall to go on. Now, the windows I'm going to use um, came from a second hand kit that I bought in a show. Um, and uh, when I opened the box and I saw all these windows, there wasn't much of the kit, but I only paid a pound for all these odds and ends and windows. So these are the windows that I'm going to use. They're quite small, and I think they'll give it a, the building a, a unique look. But uh, we shall have to wait and see when it's, it's finished. So that's where we are at the moment. We're still cutting out the walls. Um, We've got the front, we've got the side, and this wall here with the arch, that's where Mealy Boy's going to park his tractor. So I've got to cut that out and uh, scratch build a door to match that. But I'm going to leave the doors open so we can see inside and maybe uh, detail it out a little bit. So this wall here will sit just in there on, that, on the inside. So yeah, we're getting there. So what I'm doing here, this is the um, garage if you like, well not garage, but this is where um, Matey Boy is going to park his tractor. So what I'm doing here is I'm just putting in some random stones, really pressing hard with this black pen. Now you've probably seen me do this before, but um, if we're going to see inside, we might as well create some stonework. Um, inside just in case we get a chance to see it right so that's all the walls cut um, so the next thing to do is to put in the floor in the lounge area here so I'll just scribe that and then that'll be ready for painting um, I'm only going to detail two rooms for this farm which is this area and the garage but in saying that I might have second thoughts and do something for the little annex which is here so yeah so I've marked out for all the doors and windows um, as per drawing of course <laughs> and um, with this end wall I'm going to cut a slot in here um, ready for the cables for the LEDs. Um, there's going to be one LED in the garage and for the first time ever here at the North East I'm going to put a fire glow um, just here um, once I build the surround. So uh, that's the next thing to do is to cut out for all the doors and windows and make sure that they fit with these um, so I've got three doors and eight windows and two small windows. So yes, yeah, so that's what I'm going to do now is start cutting out for all the doors and windows. Then we can start. I'm just scribing for the floorboards now. So I don't know how much we're going to see of this because the, the windows are so small. Um, they only measure 12 mil wide by 14 mil high. Although there's three windows going along there, 
I'm not sure how much of this internal detail we're actually going to see, but um, we shall wait and see on that one. So we're cutting out the windows now. Um, brand new blade every time with a with a new project because uh, they do wear out. You notice how I'm starting with the corners first. Push into the corners and then come back on yourself. And that way you get a nice sharp crisp cut every time. Yeah, so these windows are uh, well they came from a HO kit but it's, it's hard to gauge with that photograph but I'm thinking well small cottage there would, there would have been small windows so I think these will look um, pretty good in here but we shall see so what we'll do, we'll do this wall and uh, Cut the windows out and see what it looks like. And hopefully that should just pop out now. Not quite there. Just a little bit in that corner. Now the good thing about these windows is they've got a, a ledge round the outside. I don't know if you can see that. See, they've got a little ledge. So basically all I've got to do is just cut out for this internal um, dimension and the this little ledge here will hide any discrepancies in the cut um, and they've already been painted black on the on the rims which uh, are on the outer window sills which I'll, which I'll keep as you can see they just snug fit in there like so So now I'm starting to put some of this millstone paper onto these walls. So I'm having to be very, very careful where I'm going to put the overlaps. And what I mean by that is the two mill overlaps where the card meets the card. So for this little piece, which is on the front wall, um, this marries up with this piece so I'm having to leave the 2 mil overhang for the joint. I just thought I'd uh, show you that before I go any further. So we're moving on a little bit and I thought I'd show you this side wall. So what I've done there is I've placed the chimney breast on the outside of the wall and I've cut in a slot on the inside of the wall here and that's for the cables to run up and I've also st stuck on the actual chimney breast on the inside as well and I've done the same here ready for the other wall so these two walls sit like this so I just thought I'd show you that notice I've got a 2 mil lip on the bottom there and that's to go over the base. You'll see that when we start putting this together. So we're almost ready to put together this Metcalf kit. Well, that's what it looks like with all these components here. Um, so what I'm doing at the moment, I'm just making sure that the windows fit into these walls. Um, Remember earlier in the video, um, I had mentioned the fact that there was a lip on these windows, which means um, I don't have to fold the card round. Um, in many of instances before, I've had to fold the card round and then put the windows in, so I don't have to do that here. So they just push fit in there nicely, and I think I will keep the black around the windows. So. That's what we're going to do next. I'm going to make sure that all these windows fit into the walls without too much effort because um, 
yeah that's it's a bit tight that one so I'm gonna have to cut a bit more out of that one and then we're almost one last thing before I start assembling this um, kit that I've made up I'm just gonna make a note of this um, garage area or storage area for the tractor um, before I put it all together obviously because once it's all together I won't be able to get a rule in there to do any measurements so I'm just uh, checking to see what I've got so it's uh, roughly uh, 39.5 so basically I'm just going to draw out a floor plan for this uh, garage or storage area for the tractor so I'm just uh, you can see where I've left it, 2 mil. that's where the car's going to sit. So it's roughly 39.5 there. And then across there from front to back, put the 2 mil on the edge. Take 2 mil off this end, so that's, that's 53 mil that way. So this will help us out once uh, we start assembling it. So let's see. So I'm starting with the the big wall, and I've just got to get uh, the edges flush um, from front to back, um, not allowing to overhang any of those edges. So we'll just hold that in place and let the glue do its job. And I'll put the end wall on. I'm just using um, the rocket card glue for this. I'll just uh, run some glue down that inside edge as well. Straighten up that end wall. And make sure that I'm flush to the edge. Now I'm not worried about the two mil card you see along there because I'm going to cover that with some brick sheet later on, as you'll see. What I'm interested in is getting these edges spot on. Squeezing them corners together with me two fingers. That's it. Pinching that together. Make sure it's flush with the edge. And flush with this edge. Making sure. So as you can see it's uh, taking shape already just with those two walls up. Just going to get rid of that excess glue. Right, so now we'll put in this wall along this edge hopefully that should line up with there which it almost does right so I may have to trim a fraction off there to bring it in line with this pencil line going that way but yeah So far, so good. So, I've trimmed, um, I think it was just about half a millimeter off of there, just to bring it in line with this line here. You can just barely see it. And uh, so now I can put this wall in, which will, as you can see, we have now the back door in place. And that's in line with this corner here, so I shall glue that in. Get on a 
that should end up flush with that edge. Looks like it does. I've just got to line it up with that pencil mark. Now I don't know if you've noticed, but I forgot to put an apex here. But uh, I can do something about that later on. Just make sure that's pushed in there and pushed in. Is the front wall, I think, because that then lines it all up along the front there. I'm just going to have to push that back that way. Yeah, so that goes on the front of there. Like so. So as you can see, it's all coming together. So what I'm having to do here, because the wall is pulling up from the base, see, I'm going to have to put a super glue tack there and there, and then put a super glue tack on that corner just to hold it in place while the glue goes off. Cause that's yeah, all that wall in there in that joint is moving. And we don't particularly want that to move. Little super glue tack in there. Wait till that absorbs into the card. Right, so then we'll just make sure that's flush along that edge. And then we'll do the same there, a little super glue tack. And then we'll just keep it in place until the card glue goes off. Then we'll just wipe out the excess glue in here. So now the big wall can be put in on this side. Hopefully that's a nice snug fit. Yeah, you notice I'm doing a, a dry fit first just to make sure that goes together and I don't have to cut any more off. a little bit better. It's flush with the base now. Just push that in. Right, we can glue that one in. Notice I'm putting the glue on both edges because this card is so absorbent. I might have to put a little super glue tack in this lower corner to keep it flush. But it seems to be going together quite well. Right, so now we have the last three pieces of this jigsaw puzzle. So I'm just I did a trial fit on this side, but I haven't done a trial fit on the other side. So I'm just taking a chance here and hoping 
I've got my measurements right. Making sure I'm flush. We wipe off all the excess. Try not to leave any glue marks if we can help it. It's right underneath that apex. And it's flush with that edge. Right, we put the last one, last piece in. Last side anyway, put that there. Just do a trial fit of the gable end. Make sure that's gonna go nice and flush. Looks like it will. Right. Now you've probably noticed I've already put uh, an intermediate wall where the barn side of this farmhouse is which is this wall here and um, that's what I should have done here is have a little gable there but it's not too late to put that in sure that's pushed into that corner Right, now oh, the last piece, oops, nearly forgot to cut the door out, so I better do that first. Oh, that would have been embarrassing, imagine trying to cut this out <laughs> when the building's all together. Hopefully we've got a little bit of time while the glue is settling in. Straighten up the wall a little bit. Right, so what we might do here is just super glue there, super glue there in that corner and in these bottom corners too. But uh, there. Yeah. So that's all the walls together. Um, and it's not a bad little building. Um, be interesting to see what it looks like in the space that we have provided. So, right, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to put this edge around the building to hide the card that we have here, the 2 mil card. Um, as you can see, I've made a little bit of a start there, and it does enhance the look of the building. But then again, we don't know if we're going to see it, because I've got to put a road in there of some sort to bring it up to the height or just below the height of this um, garage uh, floor as it were. So that's what I'm going to do now before we head over to the layout. I'm just going to glue this around the lower edge just to finish it off. 
So here we are, we've placed it on the layout and it fits in there a treat. And still a lot, lot more to do to it. Um, but yeah, it's a, a nice contrast um, having this light stone compared to the dark stone that's uh, surrounding it at the moment. I think I, I like that idea. So yeah. And also we have plenty of room here to create some sort of small farmyard as it were. Yeah, I think a single story building um, fits in well because if it was taller it wouldn't look right, it would look out of place I think. But yeah. So now we have a farm. So this view here just shows you where about it is on the layout and how close it is to the cutting. So yeah, I think it works well. So week one, we almost have a building. So next time we shall look at the doors and hopefully uh, make a start on detailing um, this room and um, obviously lining out that room with some stones all on the inside, some stone paper because um, we've already took the measurements for and that so we will be able to um, do that next time. So let's find out who's won the canopies this week. Right so we're almost at the end of this video so before we go let's find out who has won these canopies but before we do that um, let's count the bridges so starting off at uh, Newhassle North Junction there's a road bridge there if we come back across we have another road bridge here so that makes two and if we pan the camera around over to time dock there, if I just zoom in, we have a pair of bridges there, so that makes four. As we leave South Shield Station, we have one, two, three, if we zoom in over there, four and five, and then the small bridge, that makes six. So, so far, we have 10. As we come up Stevenson's bank, we have one, two, three more bridges before we reach the summit, just there where the tunnels are. So that makes 13. And as we leave High Shields, we have one, two, three, four bridges and then as we come round the corner we have the lift off bridge so in total there's 18 bridges so as you have seen there are 18 bridges on the layout um, seven of you entered the competition two of you said 21 a couple of you said 19 and a couple of you <laughs> said yeah, you'd have a guess at it at 10. Um, but one person come really, really close by saying 17. Yep, and that was you, Peter. Peter Shaw, congratulations. Um, as soon as you can get in touch with me on my uh, Facebook page, Tony Northeastern, um, leave us a private message and... Um, 
will get in touch and somehow in this crazy media circus of the world we'll get these off to you so well done Peter um, it wasn't an easy competition by far so, yeah so congratulations Peter and thank you for everybody for taking part and um, thanks again for watching bye for now bye